Welcome back to Silverstone, the penultimate race in the 2012 Porsche Club Motorsport Championship. And the race leader is Peter Morris, who's looking to wrap up the championship today. I don't think anything's going to be decided till the last race, but he's there ahead of Mark McAleer. Up across the line, they're closing in on the green car of Graham Knight, the invitation car, car number 75. Started the invitation car starting in their own grid at the front. You can see that the race leader has already passed that car, and Mark McAleer needs to do it as well. We've got Kevin Harrison chasing as well, but the lead pair through and safety down through Beckett's on this 3.66 mile circuit in qualifying yesterday. The cars were turning in lap times, average lap times, of just under 100 miles an hour. Today it's a little bit damp. And that's making a bit of a difference. Richard Bennett, Paul Follett in car number 90 there. Cliff Graham is up behind them having a, a good scrap. And the bunch of cars in front of those, including Steve Cheatham, the yellow and black Boxster S. In fact, we're looking at Steve Cheatham there from Mark Kerberley's car. So Mark recovered well from that earlier incident that we saw. And a little bit of a squirrely moment for Richard Bennett in car number seven, the third... Uh, the, sorry, the first of these three cars at the moment. Bennett racing in Class 1. Paul Follett, Class 2. And at the moment, he's second in Class 2 in this race. It does look like Alex Eacock on, on drop scores will take the class lead in this one. I think, as many people expected, Eacock's had a fantastic season. And... Uh, Pole position in round one at Brands Hatch. Pole position at round five in Donington. It was in rounds one and two, in fact, actually took pole position. And uh, two pole positions again this weekend. Ecock with one, two, three, four, five class wins over the course of the season. Class two has been very competitive. As is class one, we've seen lots and lots of different winners over the course of the year. Back we go to one of those drivers, Peter Morris has had four wins so far. Croft Circuit, he took a double, took one at uh, Alton Park as well, win there. Win on in yesterday's race uh, as well. Other winners, of course, Mark McAleer, that was at Donington. Richard Ellis at Donington Park. Mark Sumter's taken six wins, and as you heard in the interviews pre-race, prior commitments here, so couldn't make it. We're looking at Chris Dyer, car number nine running well 33 is John McCullough so everybody here has got someone to race with and John McCullough coming down into the Brooklyn Slaffield complex past the BRSC sorry BRDC building which is roughly where our camera is located and gives us a great shot of any overtaking opportunities down here into the complex on this lap it all seems fairly well ordered and John McCullough busy chasing the car of Lee Atkins in front of us, the Boxster S, number 38. Colour comes offline, looks at the inside as they go through Woodcut, but at the moment he's just going to have to settle for position, goes for a slightly wider line, and Atkins grabs the line that he wants, up in front of those, of course, Chris Dyer in the Strasser livery car wants to keep ahead. He'll be quite pleased to see a battle behind him because that will give him a bit of breathing space whilst the car's behind battle but this is the view from Marcus Carneal again still chasing his teammate Ben Demetriou. Mark Proctor opening up a little bit of a gap here the white car over the two silver livery machines and it's Demetriou still there at the moment running in fourth position we've got invitation, we've got the invitation car of Gary Marsh up ahead of the uh, race, the uh, the main championship race leaders. Of course, as I mentioned, they start to do the grid on their own and we may, may well get to see some more of those cars as the race goes on. But this is the view from Marcus Carneal again. He wants to try and get back in front of his teammate. They've played cat and mouse all beating. Marcus, the quicker for qualifying in this one. And he wants to try and get back in front of his teammate. So great racing, as we said, wherever you are. In the mix, Kieran Brewer invitation car dropping back. That's the yellow machine. As we look at 87, Mark Kerberley after that moment off the circuit at the complex earlier on. Certainly getting back in the mix and climbing up through the order. At the moment, Mark in third position down behind Paul Follett in class two. 
but this is the race for the overall lead here in our penultimate race of the year round 14 race 14 of the 2012 championship and it's the Peter Morris car that is out front and to the good at the moment and it looks like he could well convert this into a win so Morris through once again the Union flag at actually flying superbly here and into Cops corner for the last time Mark McAleer chasing we go on board with Mark Kerbley again and there's all sorts of things going on in front and spinning car which Mark he really has been in the wars managed to avoid the spinning car across the circuit and well certainly Mark Kerbley having problems we look at car number 90 Paul Follett gets the better of that one so Kerbley handing in fact second position in class two to Paul Follett it's going to be Alex Ecock who will take top points but there is Mark McAleer still chasing Peter Morris Gary Marsh in the invitation 997 GT3 car, car will be the first car in this race to take the flag but we've been following of course the main championship runners and it's going to be Peter Morris for another win second win on the bounce fifth win of the year and this is going to net him 50 championship points and secure the lead certainly on net scores well we go back down the order still some great racing going on here and are we going to see a change on this last that looks like Lee Atkins is dropping back at the expense of John McCullough so McCullough gets the job done and through but we go right back to the class ones and Peter Morris is going to take the win there is Mark McAleer both of them race winners this year McAleer with a spirited drive held the lead taking it from the pole position man earlier on but then having to surrender it going into Cops corner and now they go down the Wellington straight just the complex to go easier said than done but I'm sure Peter Morris is not going to make any mistakes he's driven a very assured race started from pole maybe not the quickest man on on the colder tyres on lap number one but then pulled it pulled it all back in a very very professional manner and he's kept a good distance between himself and Mark McAleer second and that gap out to just over a second at the moment and that's going to count because he's coming up towards the chequered flag and Peter Morris will take it Morris takes round 14 of the 2012 championship and that will give him a good start for our, sec our second race of this programme, the last race of the season. We're on board with Marcus Carneal. Coming through Woodcut. Marcus Carneal will take fourth position behind Mark Proctor. There is Procky. Punches the air with delight to take third. A podium for Proctor. Here's confirmation of the result. Invitation car, Gary Marsh up ahead of Peter Morris, who will still take the checkered flag in the main championship from Mark McAleer, Mark Proctor, Marcus Carneal, Ben Dimitri, Richard Ellis, then Chris Dyer. John McCullough and Lee Atkins. Alex Ecock winning class two. Graham Knight next from Steve Cheatham and Paul Follett. Kieran Brewer, Mark Kerberly, Fifth Graham, Andy Toon, Kareem Moody and David Bottrell. The runners completed by Stuart Ings, Paul Ward, Hugo Holmes and Ryan Licorice. So Pete, race one down. Nice victory. Was that nice and easy for you? Yeah, well, it's, well, it's actually race two now because we did race one yesterday and I managed to get, and I got pole again for this race but yeah it was a it was a bit slippy start this morning it was a bit greasy uh, we were the, I call us hoovers for the start of the race because we we're quite early birds but yeah I mean managed to keep it on the circuit uh, I got a brand new set of rub on it so I had to keep it keep it uh, get the silicon off it at the start of the race that's two down three, another one to go and I could do the triple this weekend and you've got yourself a nice couple of mementos from the first race you're not gonna have room in the car to carry them home are you well, the, the main thing is the points so uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, at the moment I'm standing the class one class one winner but it's all down because it's double points if I have a mechanical problem or a breakdown or throw it off myself which I've done before uh, I could lose lose class one but I'll keep my head together hopefully and uh, and uh, go for the win so the first race of the day is over for Alex, and well, how did that go for you, sir? Uh, it was a good race, actually. It was uh, it was enjoyable. It was a bit lonely because um, we got I got into some clear air, and there was class one boys ahead of me who were a bit quicker than me, and the class two guys behind me couldn't quite catch me because I was. 
pushing all the way. Um, but it was a very satisfying race. It was one of those ones where it got fastest lap, so it wasn't a case of holding back and not sort of not trying. It was pushing every single lap. So it ends up, I'm quite pleased though. Very good race. So the second race of the weekend is cruising in no man's land for you then. How about uh, race three? Is that going to be even better? Yeah, I think that's going to be a lot closer because Paul, who's my direct rival, he's starting, he's starting a couple of places behind me in the grid because it's where you finish from the second race. You're, it gives you a grid slot for the third. So I think because he's been on a mission this weekend, so it's going to be, I think this one's going to be a push all the way to the flag. Like an absolute, you know, everybody's going to be absolutely going for it without any holding back. So, uh, and that's going to be how the title is decided with a big fight towards the end of the last race. So with one race left to go then at Silverstone, the man battling for class two honours with Alex Eacock is Paul Follett. Paul, Hello. it's been quite a dramatic weekend already for you, hasn't it? <laughs> it has, yeah. I, uh, minor infringement in qualifying, which meant that all my qualifying times were uh, nullified. So I had to start from the back of the grid <laughs> and with a 10 second penalty. So it's like the first two corners, there was nobody there. So I had to catch them up and work my way through. And uh, fortunately, I worked my way through fast enough in both races to uh, get second in class. It's been quite relaxing this weekend because the starting, having this penalty at the start has meant that there's like no pressure. It's like they wave me off, I'm all on my own and I catch up with people. I've enjoyed overtaking cars but of course the, the problem, I, I needed satellite uh, imagery to see where Alex was because he was about half a mile down down the down the track. So uh, don't tell him, but we put new rubber on the car, and uh, the guys are doing a great job, uh, you know, checking everything and uh, anti-roll bars being greased and, and so on. So uh, what the season is is a little bit of a marathon actually, but it's actually come down to a shootout in one race. So so really, you can't have. You can't have more, more fun than that.